Welcome to another video with Mr. Long and in this video series we are doing a CAT or Computer Application Technology Prac Exam or Paper 1 for November 2022 and this is the fifth video in the series which is the access question or database question and so let's get into this question. And so with this database question we're dealing with a travel agency that keeps a database of, of the travelers to KwaZulu-Natal who book accommodation through a booking agent and we are using the five bookings database which I've got open over here. I'm just going to enable content there so that we can make changes to it make sure that you click on that when you open your access database and so let's look at the first question so we are dealing with table 5 1 so make sure that you're working on the correct table or report or whatever they specify that you must work on make sure that you're on the correct one so table 5 1 let's go open it so long there it is that's the one that we want to open so I'm going to open it quickly and what do they want me to do they want us to go into design view and edit the following so let's go into design view so there it's opened up but it's opened up in data sheet view so we're going to go to design view and let's see what they want me to do 5.1.1 change the field properties of the surname field so that the field may not be left blank so let's go there to the surname field there surname so which of these properties will make sure that it's never blank that I think it needs to be required we mustn't be option to not to leave it out so we're going to say that it must be yes for required for that and you can double check it's just one mark so it should be that easy then 5.1.2 each traveler has a unique code that automatically links his or details to the agency and it looks something along those lines insert an input mask in the member number in the following low case format so all the text is in lower case take note of that sometimes people will look here and forget about that it must all be in lower case so the first letter of the traveler's surname followed by the birth date as it appears in the id number followed by an at tvl okay so it's always at tvl at the end so it's a letter followed by a whole bunch of numbers there's six of them you remember your date of birth and your id number there's the first six numbers that represent your date of birth and then it's that at symbol there so they want us to create a input mask for this so we're going to go here to member number and let's go to input mask so we want it to be a letter and if you remember at the bottom of your exam paper you've got your input mask character sheet so we want a compulsory letter and a whole bunch of compulsory digits so we're going to use that l and that zero and then we mustn't forget that it must be lowercase so remember we need to use this less than symbol for the lowercase so that's what we're going to use so for the member number we're going to put a letter a compulsory letter followed by six numbers so we're going to put zeros for the numbers there's six of them one two three four five six there we go and then we are going to put the text at tvl at the end it's always at tvl so if you want text as it is you're going to put it in double quotes so at a so double quote at tvl close double quote so that's what it must always have as it is and remember we want this to be in small letters so we're going to put the smaller than symbol so that the that letter that is over there is going to be in lower case so i think that is what we need for the input mask i'm just going to click save oh, say yes and then let's go 5.1.3 change the field properties of the travel date as follows so we're going to go to travel date we're going to go there and we want to make a medium date set the date because so that it will not stay. so a medium date and set the date because it's not stay. so i'm going to click on travel date and i'm going to say the format must be medium date and show date picker we're going to click on that and we see what the options are and we're going to say never so that means it will not set the date picker so that it will not display so that's where we get that property over there so everything you need will be over here 5.1.4 the accommodation field should display options for accommodation from the accommodation table edit the field properties of the accommodation field to display the types of accommodation where tourists can stay so let's go look so if we come here you see there's an accommodation table and if you see those are the options available for accommodation we want them to be the only options in accommodation so how do we do that so we want that to be options from the accommodation so if we go to look up you'll see that it's got already a combo box and it's got a select accommodation from there so it's got this the sql statement there you don't have to worry too much about that but it's actually asking for a value list we don't want a value list we want it to be from a table or a query and then it will run this table or query so if we do that you'll notice now if i save everything and i come here to the table when i come to accommodation it gives me the options from that accommodation table so that's what it's doing over there so we just change that to a table or query if you wanted to type in your own values then you would use the value list 
and then 5.1.5 insert a field named id copy below the surname that will link to a certified copy of an id document okay so below surname so below surname so over here we want to insert one so i'm going to insert over here a row below surname and we want it to be called id copy so i'm going to call it id copy now what data type should we use well it's going to be a link to a certified copy of the field now a link could be a hyperlink it could be an attachment it could be an OLE object either one of those I'm going to make it an OLE object whenever we deal with files I tend to use the OLE object I think either one of those will be correct if we use a hyperlink or an attachment I think they would also accept that you could have used the hyperlink or the attachment option I'm sure they'll accept either one of those options and there we go I think we're done with the table so I'm going to save and close that and now we can move on to 5.2 which is going to deal with the form modify the form which is form 5.2 so we must open that so let's go there and just open that form if we come here to form there it is the form i'm going to double click on it here's the form we might have to go to design view to make changes so let's go to design view in the meantime and so let's uh, mod modify the form to display as shown in the example below now they give me a couple of notes to take note of first of all we must insert the five logo image to a nine centimeter wide four centimeter high so that's the logo that's going to go there so let's go look so i think that's going to go into the header so that's why i'm going to make this just a little bit bigger and we're going to insert a picture here so you can go insert image and browse for an image if you want that's one way of doing it and we're going to use the five logo i think that's the one that they wanted so they're in the data file folder with all your data files you should see that five logo png i'm going to click on ok and then we can drag it in over there just take note if you did do that insert image just a little interest for interest sake if you can't see the image in that folder make sure that you go and select all files if you want to see if the, maybe the image isn't being displayed there so that's another little thing that you can do if you can't see the image in the exam folder just try all files maybe it'll be there then and you could have also used if you came over here you could have also used that image component to also activate the wizard to find the file so there's the image that we want but we want it to be nine centimeters wide four centimeters high so i'm going to click on it and right click actually properties of this picture so there's the picture properties and i want it to be wide we said that we wanted it to be nine centimeters wide so nine centimeters nine centimeters wide and we want it to be four centimeters high those values in so there we go so there we can see our image and then add a validation rule to the date so that's the date over there to only accept dates in the years 2023 to 2025 so let's go add a validation rule so i'm gonna i don't know how to do the validation rule so we click on the date and then we're going to look for a property now i don't see anything about validation rules there let's click on data probably going to be more in the data aspect ah there's a validation rule so we want the rule to be any year between 2020 and 2025 so what i'm going to do there is i'm going to make the rule to be greater than equal to the first date in 2023 so 2023 slash 01 slash 01 that's the, it must be bigger than that but it must be less than so at the same time i'm saying and it must be less than equal to 2025 and what's the last date in 2025 that is the 12th month and it's the 31st day so if i do that let's see what it does it should accept it so that's going to be my rule remember you can't say greater than equal to 2023 because 2023 is not a date it's just a number you want to say the whole date when you are dealing with date fields so make sure that you specify the whole date it would be very tempting to go greater than equal to 2023 and less than equal to 25 it won't work you need to specify the actual date value and save the changes before testing your answer so we're going to save everything and I think that's all that they want us to do. They mentioned all those details. So if we go to design view and you can see if we change this date now to 2026, it'll say, ah, oh, there's a problem with the validation rule. So we'll just go escape and undo it. So there we go. So that seems to be working. I think that's all. That's question 5.2. Let's go on to now 5.3. Here we're going to do some queries. They want us to open up the query file three. So let's go find query file three. There it is. So I'm going to open up. I'm actually going to go to design view so that we can make the changes over here for the query. So they ask us to do display the records of all the travelers who booked in a group size of more than three people. So how do we get a group size of more than three people? Let's just look at the data because you need to understand the data. So group size of more than three people, not equal to three, more than three. So let's go to group size. We're going to move across yeah, group size, the criteria 
for group size must be greater than three. That's my first thing. You'll see here if I, all those are more than three. That's the first criteria. The second criteria is that through the easy stay booking agent. What does that mean? Well, let's look at the data and booking agent must be easy stay with no space. So let's go. If you do it bit by bit, then you can see if there's a mistake. And if you make a mistake, you'll know what the most recent thing is that caused the mistake. So easy stay. So if I do that, we can test it. So there we go. It's easy stay and three or more or more than three. And then what's the other criteria? And we'll be using a taxi or private option for transport. How do we know that? So the transport there must be a taxi or private. Those are the only two options. So therefore, I'm going to under transport, I'm going to say it must be a taxi or it must be private. And I think it'll put the double quotes in around for me. So there we go. If we run it, we can see it's only private or taxi and there are only four records for that answer. So there we go. That's correct. I think we're going to save that. And that's that query done. Okay, let's move on to 5.4. Open the 5.4 query. So we're going to open that one now. Go to design view and display the total cost per booking agent. So we want the total cost for each booking agent. So at the moment, if you look at this, we've got the book, all the booking agents and the cost, but we want the total cost for each of those books. So all the reservations.com must be added together. So what we're going to do for is we are going to use a totals over here. So you see that totals when I click on it, so look what adds over here. Click on totals, there's now a total column where we group in by the booking agent. So we want to book by the booking agent, but we want to total the cost. They said we want the total cost, which means we're gonna sum those values. So instead of grouping the cost, we're gonna sum the cost. So if I do that, you'll see that easy stay total, the sum of it is all that, the, each one is being total. So we've got one record for each of the booking agents and that value is the total of all of their costs added together so there we go that's an easy one save and close that one and let's do 5.5 open query 5.5 so we can open that one go to design view it's probably best the calculated field here determines whether a traveler was born in the year 19 or the year 20. Do not modify the year field. Okay, so we mustn't modify the year field. Insert a new calculated field, date of birth, to combine the value in the year field and the date of birth in the ID to display as that. So we want the date of birth to be displayed as something that looks like that. So we're going to get the 19 or the 20 from the year field. So we're going to get it from there. But now we need to get the rest of it from the RD field. So how do we get that? So let's go have a look. Let's look at the data for this one. So we've got the RD field and that you can see if you look at the data, I think that's a text field. If I remember correctly. So the year is being done for us. So we've got that one already. We need to add in a new calculated field. So the first two numbers for the year are going to come from that year field. So I'm going to say equals the year field like that. And now I'm going to add on to that. Now I don't want to add it as a number. I don't want to do like add numbers to get. I want to add it as if it was strings, as if it was text. Now, if you remember from Excel, when we concatenate strings or add strings together, we don't use a plus, but we use an ampersand. So if we use that, we can then add text onto each other. So 20 plus 19 is not going to be 39. It's going to be 20 with 19 next to it. So 2019. So what I'm going to do is I'm take the year and add. Now I want, what do I want? I want to get the first six characters from the RD field. Now, if you remember from your text handling, there should be a left function in access, just like there was in Excel. But instead of referring to a cell, we're going to refer to a field. So I'm going to say copy from the left of the RD field and how many characters do you want to copy? You want to copy six of them. So go and get the year from the year field and then go copy the first six letters of the RD field and add them together as if they were text. Let's see what happens if I do that. So there we go. I think that is correct. If we look there, not, I think that's perfect. The only thing that must change is if we want the field to be called DOB. So once I've done an equal to sign and I've done the calculated field, you'll see that it's changed it so that that EXP one's there. I'm going to change that EXP one to whatever you want to call it, which is DOB. 
So let's go have a look. There we go. DOB and there is my field. I think that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So seems like a lot of uh, marks for just that, but it seems to work and I'm going to take it. So take all those six marks. Boom. So let's move on to now reports. It's the last bit of the question. So we can save this and close that. So now we're going to go to reports. Now I don't see a report, which means we're probably going to create one. Create a report called RPT5 underscore six based on TBL info as follows. Display the name, surname, group size, accommodation, transport. Display the total number of people per transport type in the group footer and sort the information by the surname. That seems quite simple. Although we base it on that, there's no special criteria. If there was like only those where the group size was three or more, if that was what they were asking, then I would first make a query and then base it query on TBL info and then base the report on the query. But there doesn't seem to be much criteria here. So we can go straight into creating this report. Now I'm going to do it twice. I'm going to show you how to do it using the Harry Potter, or I mean the wizard. And then I'm going to show you how to do it if you make a mistake and you want to edit it later. So look at both ways of how to do it. We're going to create a report using the report Harry Potter. I mean, wizard, you're a wizard, Harry. Click on the report wizard. And we want to base this query. What was it off of the TBL info? And what fields do we want? I think we wanted surname, name. We wanted group size. We wanted accommodation and transport, if I remember correctly. Surname, group size, accommodation, transport. There we go. So that's how we select the fields. Next, we want to display the total number of people by transport type. In other words, we're going to say group it by transport type. So we can say group by transport. And then when I click on next, we can now sort it by surname in ascending order. But now this is the summary option. Because we've done a grouping, we've got summary options. So I'm going to click on summary options and we want the total number of people which is the total group size by transport type. So total, that means we're going to sum the group size. So that's what we want. We want to sum the group size and then click OK. So that's how we do the calculation. So that's where we did the grouping. Here's where we do the sorting. But because we've got a grouping, we can now do summary options and go next. And is there any other information that they want? That seems to be all. And we must just save it as RBT five six so go next go next we're going to call it rpt five underscore six and we're going to finish now we're going to go and close this so we can go to design view and they said they wanted the sum to be in the transport footer is that what they want in the trans in the group footer which is the transport footer so have a look there if we go look at the view you can see it's grouped by transport and at the bottom for that transport we've got the total number of records for the group size for bus and then we've got the total number of records for private and so on so it seems to be sorted by surname so there we go that's great so that's how we did it now i'm going to do that query again i'm going to create it using the report wizard but i'm going to use a different one i'm going to just select the fields so select from table info select the fields name surname group size accommodation transport so just those ones and i'm going to skip the whole grouping and sorting option yeah i'm going to go straight past it straight past it straight past it i'm going to call this rpt5 underscore 6 v2 this is my second version to show you how to do it if the report is already created he has our report it's already created how do i do the grouping of that from this side well i'm going to click on group and sort and i'm going to add a group which means i'm going to group it by transport so there i've got a group by transport and then i'm going to add a sort and sort it by surname and it doesn't specify ascending or descending so we can leave it as ascending if it's not specified we assume ascending so now that i've got that i want to now put a formula in the transport or the grouping footer now you'll notice there is no transport footer so when i click on this group you need to click here on more so that you can say hey i've got a header but where's my footer it says without a footer now we want a footer so with a footer and you'll see there the transport footer appears that is my grouping footer and i'm going to insert a text box there we go that point in the transport footer i'm going to click there and i'm going to say my formula is equal to the sum because we total of the group size and you must make it exactly like it's spelled there so group size and because it's one word we can just leave it like it is if it was lots of words with spaces we would have to put square brackets around it and then here we can actually just put in here the total group size whatever whatever label you want and by doing that if we go back to view you can see it's grouped by bus it's all there all the transport and then there's the total for all the bus by group size and then it's sorted by surname as well that's another way of doing it and i think you get all the marks whichever way you do do it so there we go so then we can save that and done i think we've done save it yes boom and there we go the database question is done
support the channel by clicking on the subscribe button leave a like leave a comment and share us with your friends and also go look at our computer terms channel for theory videos video links in the video description and remember don't do it the long way do it the mr long way